Today on the news and why it matters, the winners and losers of the New Hampshire primary. We have got all of the coverage for you. Uh, also, people call to impeach Trump yet again over the DOJ's involvement in Roger Stone's sentencing. Oh my gosh, it's like Groundhog's Day. It never ends. We've got a lot to get into and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by conservative commentator Grant Stinchfield. Nice to see you in a very lovely shirt, yeah. Thank you I much. might add. You, a you're a great so, bow. You oh, well, thank bow. you. Thank you. It is it's a very controversial bow. <laughs> according, controversial. according to the people on the internet, it's very controversial uh, for an adult female to wear a bow. But well, guess I what? Love it. Thank you. Love the bow it. lives on. Thank you. Thank you. Yaku Buyens, uh, filmmaker extraordinaire, president and founder of uh, Share Together and fellow at the Falkirk Center. Yaku, thank you, thank you for being here again. Pulling double duty this week. Thank you, man. And we've got uh, TheBlaze.com's own Aaron Colin. Thank you for being here as thank well. You. My favorite reporter. Thank you. I was going to say, you're going to have to work on my intro because he's got a lot of stuff. He's got the shirt. So. I know. Like, and it's like, oh, I, you're oh and also Aaron's there here. There you go. I'm wearing a nice tie, guys. <laughs> looking great. He's like, you got nothing, Stinchfield, but the shirt. That's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot to get into. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Black Rifle Coffee Company, who, by the way, is driving me being here today because it's wet and gross outside, and it's just one of those days that you just want to get back under the covers and sleep. Uh, I did not want to get out of bed this morning, but then I had their calf blend, which is double caffeinated coffee, and I was good to go. They are a veteran-owned and operated premium small batch roast-to-order coffee company for those of you who are patriots out there. So they import the highest quality beans from around the world, and then they don't roast it until after you place your order. So you are getting the freshest coffee available. Uh, you can choose from all sorts of blends that they have online. And you can go with the Black Rifle Coffee Club, which actually uh, they will send it to you. They will ship it directly to your home or office for free. Every month you're getting a discount on the blends that you choose, and then you're getting it shipped to you for free so you're not running out of coffee uh, late at night, and then you gotta go to the grocery store to make sure you have it for the morning. No, you don't have to do that with Black Rifle Coffee Club. Go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. That is blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. Enter the discount code Y to receive 20% off your first order. That includes Black Rifle Coffee Club, which I always say I highly recommend you're getting a discount on top of a discount, if you go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Y, enter promo code Y for 20% off. Um, so, New Hampshire. New Hampshire happened, and luckily for us, we got the results before like a whole week later. Yep. Like in Iowa, we actually know what happened. Uh, Bernie Sanders, of course, won the Democrat primary Last night in New Hampshire, he edged out both Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, who I'd like to get, uh, gentlemen, your thoughts on her performance, because I know, she, you know, it, it wasn't a shock that she came in third, but was very interesting to see the amount that she pulled, comparatively speaking, when you look at Warren and uh, Joe Biden. So Bernie Sanders ended up with 25.7% uh, of the count as of uh, just earlier this afternoon with 75,859 votes, just barely edging out Pete Buttigieg, uh, who got 72,126 votes. Amy Klobuchar behind them at 19.8% uh, with 58,499 votes. And then you get really down there with Elizabeth Warren, 27,000-ish votes, and Joe Biden didn't even crack 25,000. Um, this wasn't a shock. Bernie winning New Hampshire. I know we went into it thinking he obviously would take New Hampshire for the Democrat primary. Uh, what do you think of Buttigieg's performance here in, uh, in New Hampshire? I think he's got to be thrilled, right? I mean, he's, he's in second place mm -hmm. looking in his rearview mirror at Joe Biden and, and Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. I mean, I ran for Congress in Texas in a congressional district. I got more votes than Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden did in a whole state. <laughs> okay, well that's gotta make you right? feel good too. Yeah. <laughs> but the problem is it's not very many votes no matter how you look at it. This is insane what's happening in the Democratic Party that now you've got Bernie Sanders, a self-avowed socialist. We were talking, mm -hmm. Yako, he's not even a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I'll say it, the guy's a communist. I mean, yeah. he's socialist, communist, he's not a Democrat. 
it's not really his party. He's kind of just found a home, a train to ride on. So I'm cutting you short here, but I'm with you. I, it's fascinating to me what's happening. It's almost laughable because their entire party is falling apart mm -hmm. here right before their eyes. And again, I think the big winner coming out of all this again is Michael Bloomberg. Mm, really? I do. Wow. So you're going to disagree with President Trump on that one? Well, I mean, look, Bloomberg is is showing well in many of these states. Yeah. He hasn't even joined this primary race yet, really. He's not even on the stage. He's got a ton of money to spend on, on advertisements. And if they keep battling it out, he's going to just be the last man standing because they're all going to knock each other out. Mm -hmm. Aaron, do you agree? I think Pete should be happy that he's in second, but I don't see a real path for him to win. Because once we get into these states that have a little bit more diversity, obviously it's been well said that he does not have any support among black voters. It's going to be a problem in South Carolina and all these other states. So, I mean, he should be happy, but he's not gonna, he doesn't have a path. Bloomberg, he's doing better than expected, but I don't think he has a path either. I think what you're looking at is when Warren drops out after her terrible performance, mm -hmm. that's just going to help Bernie. And I think he's gone so far now that there's no stopping him, no matter what the establishment wants to do to him. The question becomes is, do, do the Democrats realize they need a so-called moderate? I don't believe a moderate exists in the Democratic Party right. today, at least those running. But if they do, is that their Klobuchar mm -hmm. or is that their Michael Bloomberg? If they come to the realization that, that they need somebody like that, and then, you know, you have Biden, too, with, with possibly a path, with what Aaron's talking about when you go to some of these other states, do they wake up mm. and realize we can't do this. We can't put Bernie Sanders up against the reason president. that I don't Trump. think they do is because those candidates that fit that profile don't get any enthusiasm. You know, so they're they're looking for somebody with excitement who can turn out voters. That's how desperate they are to beat Trump. They just want turnout. So they're sacrificing yeah. logical policy for saying we just want somebody who will get people excited to go vote so we can try to have a chance to beat Trump. You're sacrificing, but there's a payback on a sacrifice, and here's the payback that nobody's really talking about. One in four identified voters in New Hampshire last night at the Trump rally were registered Democrats. Really? One in four, that's a fact, were registered Democrats at the Trump rally. There's people in the Democrat Party that's saying, no, no, come on, can we get normal? And they can't find normal in their party because their party will not endorse normal. They're going to jump. Well, yeah, and remember what Trump's done in New Hampshire. This guy last night got over 120,000 yes. votes, second only to Reagan, with only 90% of the vote in, mm. maybe the highest in history, because family matters. The wallet matters. He brought jobs, 18,000 jobs in New Hampshire. They want the Green New Deal, which will take 25,000 jobs from New Hampshire, $2 billion from New Hampshire. They know this. And there's nobody on the other side. Bernie... Bernie is literally what those one in four Democrats are jumping for don't want. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. They well, don't want socialism. And you brought up uh, President Trump's performance in New Hampshire, which I do feel is being underreported yeah. by the Gorgeous. mainstream media. You know, they're talking about the Democrat primaries. But in comparison, oh. you know, Bernie Sanders went up there and gave his victory speech and said, you know, no, let's let me say tonight that this victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. I'm not so sure about that, Bernie, because, you know, Bernie got, uh, what, 75,000, almost 76,000 votes. Trump, an incumbent, right, so you would think sure. would be someone who people would not be compelled to go exactly. show up and exactly. cast a vote for, yeah. still got, as you said, 120,476 votes. And just to put that into perspective, as far as incumbent voting in New Hampshire goes, Barack Obama, when he was running as an incumbent, 49,080. Exactly. Uh, Bush, 53,962. And Clinton is the only one who comes close in, in those three uh, past presidents at 76,797. Says a lot. A uh, I mean, lot, that a is a huge difference. I think it speaks to how what good of a campaign they're running in terms of how early he started campaigning. You know, I think in 2012, Obama probably waited till Romney was the nominee before he started holding rallies. Trump is not waiting for Democrats to get momentum. He's getting out there right now and mobilizing voters. And so that when November comes around, he's going to have a wave of momentum mm -hmm. that's going to be able to carry him and make sure that voters are turning out for him. Trump is an absolute fighter. I mean, he had a rally in New Hampshire on primary night, which was supposed to be the Democrats night yes. in New Hampshire. Think he about brought that. the fight right to their turf. And then he whoops them yes. in numbers. And I will tell you something. I want to throw kudos out to guys like Jerry Falwell Jr., the surrogates. Nobody talks. Trump's surrogates mm -hmm. are warriors. Scalise, Steve Scalise, these guys, they are 
fighters, man. They go out there, they do small little mom and pop town halls on the Dems night. Mm -hmm. It's their night. And he says, okay, let's play. Yeah. Remember what he did when he, when he walked his TV event down, down the street when they wouldn't host him in 2016? It's fun, man. I tell you, it's going to be a fun ride. Uh, what do you make, Aaron, of Clomentum? Clomentum? Yes. I don't know what to make of it. I'm surprised by it. I don't yeah. see what her appeal is. I mean, besides the fact that she... She seems present, somewhat sane, She right? presents a front of reasonableness, yes. but if you read anything about her, you realize that she is possibly a crazy person right. who throws things at people and <laughs> eats salad with a comb. She's a loose cannon. Um, and I don't think that... I, I can't I'm have sorry. a president who eats salad with a comb. I haven't she, heard okay, that. There are some wild stories about how she abuses really? her staff and oh, berates yes. them. So that she, I've heard. That I've she, heard yeah. she has anger problems and things like that. But I didn't she, know women use combs. I thought they usually go to the only, brush. Only, only for when salad. salad. Only when you eat salad. <laughs> when, you're, when your staffer forgets a fork, I guess. But wow. I don't see that holding up. I mean... She's just not a compelling candidate. She might be a good VP for somebody, mm -hmm. but I don't see that she has the national momentum to energize the party that anybody's going to mobilize behind her long term. But that's a great showing for her last night, better than anybody could have expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, Elizabeth Warren, poor old Focahontas. She has now, after this performance, canceled over $500,000 uh, of ad reservations in South Carolina and 60000 in Nevada, all scheduled to run next week. you got to believe this is the beginning of the end for Can her. I just say yeah. that, that this just proves how dumb Elizabeth Warren really is. All right, Now, as a businessman, and I've been around marketing a long time, when you start to falter, that is not the time to cut your ad budget. That is the time to increase your mm. ad budget if you are faltering. That goes for a business. That goes for a political candidate. You know, marketing is not an expense. It's an investment. That's right. <laughs> right? And she's, she's not even investing in herself at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th I think there's a lot of pressure on her from donors and saying, uh, we're bleeding. You cut ripcord. It's ripcord time. Why would she stay in? You know, I understand why Biden would stay in because former VP, optics. The, the optics, mm -hmm. but Elizabeth, why? It's pride, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, once her attack on Bernie didn't take hold, that was it for her because her only hope was to be able to transfer those voters to her as the progressive far left option. And now she's just kind of sitting in no man's land, you know, wondering what she's going to do, sitting at 9%. And it is pride. She's trying to shift from South Carolina until I think she's investing in maybe Nevada or somewhere like that. Admitting the loss in South Carolina and hoping that goes on. But how did that work for Joe Biden? He tried to cut his losses in New Hampshire, but he's so embarrassed by that loss that donors are going to flee from him anyway. And it really just sabotages your campaign once people see that you don't even believe in yourself as a candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long do you see Joe Biden staying in this race? I think it, it depends on Super Tuesday, right? And his whole plan right now depends on Super Tuesday. Yeah. And so we'll see. I mean, you know, you can spell out a path for Joe Biden in this race. He's not out of it it's by not any means. Impossible. It's yeah. not impossible. Yeah. You've had, no. I think there's like 98% of the delegates are still up for grabs yeah. here. And he has name recognition among the other, other ones. So he's got to stay through Super Tuesday. If Super Tuesday goes badly for him, then I think Joe Biden steps aside. Look, can we not throw out this notion? And maybe it's a little crazy, but I've said before, that establishment, they want Biden. Yeah. So I could very easily believe that the, 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 the whisper in his ear is, stay in, we're going to find a way. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Super uh, Tuesday. Uh -huh. There's, there's some Hail Mary coming. We're going to find a way because that's really who Robert they want. Do you remember when Hillary started to get like sick and unhealthy and they started to hide her from the public? This seems to me like what they're doing with Joe Biden. Like he constantly makes gaffe after gaffe. Mm -hmm. He mixes up his words. And look, we all mix up our words. But he's doing this on national television on a doesn't regular know what basis. State he doesn't know what state. But, you know, I get it if you're flying around from state yeah, to state. Sure. It can happen okay. to the best of them. The problem is it happens to him Freaking. every single day, if not every hour. So they're hiding him, and again, you get back to the same deal. It's the opposite of what you need to be doing if you want to win elections. You've got to get out there, and they want to hide him. And his whole case him. has been, I'm the most electable, and he's finishing yeah. fourth and fifth. What does that say? And if he doesn't do well in South Carolina, if he you know, goes below expectations there, nobody's going to support him because they're going to see that was supposed to be his strongest state. If he doesn't do well there, then nobody's going to support him down do, the road. Do you think that his voters, once, you know, let's say that the, that happens the way it looks like it's going to happen and Joe Biden, you know, drops out here in less than a month, um, 
Do you see his voters going to Buttigieg? Do you think Buttigieg can no, change? No, Buttigieg, I don't know. I, I, mean, I, 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 I don't know how many people are paying attention, but Pete is really far left. He's not. Pete is far left. He's very far left. He's not a Biden prototype as he much as they want to lump him in there. No. He's not. And but he's, he's, he's tricking people into that. Exactly. But, but he, he's not there. And so I think maybe if they start looking around, they look at Pete, they might say, well, he doesn't actually represent what I thought he did at all. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that does give us some momentum and she gets some of those voters. I don't know. I, I think, look, Pete is far left. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to come out. And a head to head, it's going to come out. But I think the only place they can go is they probably go to Bloomberg. Because, it, look, at least they come from big establishment, big government, you know, and I don't know. If Klobuchar, what I was surprised with last night is by how much Biden lost mm -hmm. the gap. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that's a huge gap. Because he doesn't have a base. You know, you talked about supporters, and I say it jokingly, but it's not really a joke. Buttigieg has a base. He's got his crew of supporters. Heck, sure. Yang has a group of supporters. Sanders has a group core of supporters. Warren does too. Who are Biden supporters? Biden was just the kind of old like a folks place that have been in the Democratic yeah. Party forever, and they just know his name because he was Barack Obama's vice president. Like that's not a core group yeah. of supporters that yeah. love you. And it's showing. That's a great point. It's showing. Uh, before we go to break, we'd love to uh, bid a fond farewell to Andrew Yang. Uh, he has suspended his campaign after last night's results in New Hampshire. Yang gang, we're very sorry to hear about your loss. I know Aaron Stop is smiling. Aaron. <laughs> you need to be sad. Where's the tears? Aaron is I devastated. I trust that we're going to do a whole segment on this next, right? Face our respect. Aaron is devastated. I mean, in all seriousness, I think we all can agree at the table. Andrew Yang seemed like a good enough guy. His policy mm -hmm. ideas were just really not there. But uh, he wanted to come to the table. You he didn't wanted want your $1,000 a month? I didn't want my $1,000 okay. a month of UBI. <laughs> uh, he wanted to talk to the other side. Uh, and for that, we commend him and uh, here is our fond farewell to Andrew Yang. My campaign will now give a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month for an entire year to 10 American families. Someone watching this at home right now. If you believe that you can solve your own problems better than any politician, go to yang2020.com and tell us how $1,000 a month will help you do just that. Before we get back into the conversation, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So, uh, not sure if you know this, but uh, you know, you spend all of this money, probably, you know, with putting security cameras in your home, and you've got a security system, and you think, okay, my home is safe from someone coming in and stealing all of my stuff, you know, stealing my home. No, actually, you're not safe. There is something called home title theft, and it is one of the fastest growing white collar crimes, according to the FBI. Uh, there is no bank, no identity theft protection program. Nothing protects you except for home title lock. So home title lock puts a virtual barrier around your home's title and mortgage, which it's online, right? It's stored online. So hackers, people who get on the internet and, you know, they, they go, you go on the dark web, they're selling home titles for 40 bucks a pop. Uh, people can access this stuff and do really bad things and then all of your home's equity is gone. Home Title Lock is there to protect you. All you have to do is go to HomeTitleLock.com, register your address to see if you're a victim. If you're a victim, you're not going to know it unless you go there and register your address. And then you can sign up to help protect your title so it doesn't happen. You've got 60 risk-free days of protection with us if you go to HomeTitleLock.com. That is HomeTitleLock.com. Enter in your address to see if you have already been a victim of home title fraud. So, uh, hashtag impeach Trump is trending this afternoon because the people, 
the people are very upset that Trump dared get involved in the uh, legal case that Roger Stone has going on right now. Now, in a series of extraordinary actions Monday and Tuesday, the four federal prosecutors who are the, you know, the entire legal team that charged Roger Stone with a series of process crimes uh, that stemmed from the whole collusion case with Russia, which ended up not being anything, obviously, that President Trump was found to have wrongdoing in. Uh, this legal team recommended seven to nine years in prison for Roger Stone. They were rebuked by the Department of Justice for uh, excessive and unwarranted recommendations. And then they just all quit. <laughs> Which was really, they just were like, all right, fine, we quit. We suck and we quit. Uh, I guess I didn't say that last part. But uh, President Trump, of course, praised the DOJ for taking action to address the, quote, miscarriage of justice to which he was largely criticized for, and they said to impeach Trump because he's getting involved in this case again. Um, now, Stone's attorneys maintain that 15 to 21 months in prison would be more in line for the types of crimes that uh, he has been uh, accused and, of course, convicted of. What say you, Grant? Wait till President Trump pardons him. <laughs> They're really going to go <laughs> off the deep end. Do you think he's going to? I, I, I don't think he's going to pardon well. You know, you never know. Yeah, what you never Trump. know. You, ne you never, ever know. I yeah. mean, there's a chance he could. I don't think he is, but there's a chance he could. What this tells me more is that they're going to go down this road of impeachment no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. They are going to be running that hashtag impeach Trump mm -hmm. no matter what he does. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, he could pass gas during a state dinner and they're going to say impeach Trump. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, like, it's true. Like, and what else do they have? Right. No candidate, no substance, no message. It, Impeach him based on what? On an opinion? Because, you know, Stone wasn't actually part of the campaign. Didn't work. So you have President Obama endorsing Trudeau. Mm -hmm. Is he colluding? Mm -hmm. Is he interfering in an election because he has an opinion, because he's endorsing a guy? Where are we in our country that when someone has an opinion, all of a sudden now it's an impeachable offense? And, and this is the door they opened by impeaching him for nothing. You know, yeah. at some point, somewhere in the future... In the very, 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 very distant future, the Democrats may have the White House again. And then <laughs> what are they going to do? That's terrifying. If we can impeach them on an opinion. Yeah, that's right. a great point. It's amazing how that word just carries so little weight compared to what it did years ago. The right wolf. Now it's just like impeachment, impeachment, whatever. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything. And that sentence, I think, was obviously excessive. Uh, I, I think there's an argument to say maybe I preferred Trump not insert himself into that in such an aggressive way, but that doesn't make it anywhere close to an impeachable situation. And so for them to keep saying that, haven't they learned that that was such an unpopular thing they did? It was so ineffective in hurting even Trump's approval ratings or his chances of re-election. So I really don't even understand why they would go back to that as a political weapon when it was clear that it didn't work. And see, isn't it, I mean, you know, I, you, I tend to agree with you that it's like, all right, it'd be great if he didn't like type everything you out. You say that about Twitter. a lot of things. You know what I, I mean? But, it, but they, they ask for it when they go on and say, well, we need to impeach him over this. We need to impeach him over that. Then it's like, yeah, he should be able to say what he wants to say because no matter what, they're going to come up with something. They're going to overreach and say he should be impeached. And I'm not 100% you know familiar with that process, but I, was, I guess I'm surprised that those attorneys were able to recommend that sentencing, but then the Department of Justice was some surprised that they did that. I wonder where the disconnect was, where they were going off on their own with this sentencing that their department didn't agree with. So there's, there's some unanswered questions, I think, in how that all came about. But there's also a lot, let's not miss something here. There's a lot to be said for four, not two, not three, four, four. lawyers mm -hmm. to just bail, cut mm -hmm. bait and bail yeah. with resistance. Maybe because you knew you had a house made of straw. You had a mm -hmm. straw man case here. The, I mean, the, why, uh, that's it seems like maybe they were odd. just grandstanding and saying, we're going to just throw odd, this out right? here and, and, yeah, and At least bail. you had to think about that. And, and, and sorry, Grant, one other thing. Why would he not keep speaking? He got elected in 2016 mm -hmm. because he became a voice for the voiceless. And they're saying, speak it. Right. You're right. saying what I want to say in Oklahoma, in Nebraska. You know, you're saying it. Yeah. Keep saying it. Why would he not? Yeah. I mean, he's going to keep speaking. Yeah. Last word real quick. Okay. Well, the four prosecutors, the government is filled with these types of people. This is the exact definition of the deep state. We have a huge government with a bunch of liberals that are bureaucrats inside it, and that goes for some of these federal, federal prosecutors. Yeah, all right, back in a minute. All right, jump in front no, of No, you're good, man. Do you want to let anybody else talk to it? Hey, 
a happy second anniversary, two year anniversary of the news and why it matters today. Uh, in honor of that, we are doing a brand new contest. If you want to win merch, a t-shirt, a hat or a mug from the Blaze Media shop, all you got to do is go to where you get your audio podcast, hit subscribe. If you are subscribed, take a screenshot and use the uh, the hashtag news and why contest. Tweet it out and you will be entered to win a t-shirt, a hat or a mug. Go there now.